Hello everyone. I hope you remember in the last class we learned about the components of conflict, necessity of conflict and types of conflict. In today's class we are going to learn models of conflict, functional and dysfunctional conflicts as well as relationship between conflict and performance. Now let's come to models of conflict. The Thomas Gilman conflict model comprises five key components along two separate parameters assertiveness and uh, cooperativeness. Thomas Kilman conflict model defines assertiveness as the extent to which the individual attempts to satisfy his or her own concerns and cooperativeness as the extent to which an individual attempts to satisfy the other person's concerns. Using these base dimensions, assertive strategies to managing conflict encompass uh, competing and collaborating while cooperative methods involve avoiding and accommodating. The art of compromise lies directly at the center since it's very natural to seek a middle ground. Uh, let's look at the model. The Thomas Kilman conflict model uh, method stresses the importance of applying the most appropriate strategy to individual situations. For example, at first glance, uh, dealing with conflict by avoiding the situation doesn't sound like a very strong approach. However, as authors Kenneth Thomas and uh, Ralph Kilman point out, there are instances when avoidance is appropriate, such as when issues are seemingly or re relatively unimportant. When you need to let emotions cool down or need to collect more information, when others can resolve an issue more effectively, or simply when the costs of co confronting an issue outweigh the benefits of a resolution. Functional and dysfunctional aspect of conflict. As we have seen the interactionist view or uh, modern view does not propose that all conflicts are good. There are both positive as well as negative aspects of conflicts. Bounding recognizes that some optimum level of conflict and associated personal stress and tension are necessary for progress and productivity. Thus, we can say that conflicts which support the goals of the group and improve its performance are known as functional conflicts. If we look at the conflict from functional point of view, conflicts are sub, uh, supposed to serve the following functions. First one, release of tension. Conflicts when expressed can clear or reduce the tension, which might otherwise remain suppressed. Suppression of tension can lead to uh, imaginative distortion of truth, sense of frustration and tension, uh, biased opinions resulting in fear and distrust. Second functional uh, conflict, we can say like uh, analytical thinking. When a group is faced with a conflict, the members display analytical thinking in identifying various alternatives. In absence of conflict, they might not have been creative or even might have been uh, lethargic. Third one is group cohesiveness. Intergroup conflict brings about closeness and uh, solidarity among the group members. It develops group loyalty and greater sense of group identity in order to compete with the outsiders. This increases the degree of group cohesiveness which can be utilized by the management for the uh, attainment of organizational goals in an effective manner. Next we can think of competition. Actually, conflicts sometimes promote competition and hence it results in uh, increased efforts. Another positive side is, uh, of conflict is can bring uh, important problems to the surface so they can be addressed. Okay, in this way you can think of may other aspects too. Functional conflict also called uh, constructive conflict. What it is called? Constructive conflict results in benefits to individuals, the team or the organization. Whereas dysfunctional conflict, uh, it is or it's also called destructive conflict works to the disadvantage of an individual or a team or an organization. It diverts energies, hurts groups, cohesion, promotes interpersonal hostilities and overall creates a negative environment for workers. Dysfunctional conflict blocks an organization or a group from reaching its goals. The dysfunctional aspects of the conflicts can be visualized in the following ways. One, high employee turnover, tension, dissatisfaction, 
climate of distrust or etc conflicts may weaken the organization as a whole if the management is not able to handle them properly and if the management does not interfere in the earlier stages unnecessary troubles may be invited at the later stages it is the cost to the organization because resignation of personnel weaken the organization and feeling of distrust among members have negative impact impact on productivity so this is about functional and dysfunctional conflicts now let's move on to relationship between conflict and performance in a team when people work as individuals and groups their work and relationships uh, may not always uh, be smooth in conflict disagreements occur there are differences in uh, inter uh, interpretation of facts differences based on behavioral expectations and people compete with one another protect their values and hold opinions different from others which is very natural this results in conflicts conflict uh, does not mean fight it is disagreement due to opposing ideas and perceptions amongst individuals it can take place between individuals between members of the same group different groups and between organization that we have learned in the previous class it can arise between line and staff different functional heads for example like a uh, conflict might be between uh, production and sales manager at different levels in different degrees now let's see the uh, graph of relationship between conflict and performance from this graph you can identify organizational performance or performance in teams uh, is low when conflicts a uh, conflict is at two extremes high that is at uh, point c or low that is at point a organizational performance is high at moderate levels of conflict at low level of conflict that is at point a there is a uh, usually mutually of uh, mutual opinions people agree with each other and there is no stimulation to change people are not adaptive to environmental ch uh, challenges and therefore do not search for new ideas the organizational performance thus tends to below at high level of conflict that is at point c people do not agree with each other there is lack of cooperation amongst their activities their behavior their nature this leads to lack of discipline in the organization resulting in low organizational productivity at optimum level of conflict that is at point b people disagree with each other resulting in new ideas people think differently uh, in a constructive way new solutions are developed to deal with problems and achieve the goals uh, through optimum utilization of resources well this is for today in the next class we are going to learn about levels of conflict and uh, sources of conflict thank you happy learning mm -hmm.